Hello and welcome to this joint presentation between Pico Automotive and ADS Auto Inform. I'd like to introduce Steve Smith from Pico Hello. and myself, Frank Master from ADS. The subject today is NVH, noise, vibration, harshness, an incredibly fascinating subject. And I'm sure Steve, you'll agree, an incredibly um, uh, useful tool given the development of, of the mechanical systems on vehicles. Yeah, absolutely, Frank. I think the more you dig and delve into NVH, the you're on a journey, that's for certain. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of NVH with Picoscope is the non-intrusive fashion in which we can diagnose numerous components, as you'll see over the next mm -hmm. seven or so videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a challenging subject. Mm -hmm. The capture of vibration and noise is relatively straightforward. Nothing's easy. I think we've said that so many times before, but um, the analysis techniques that we can do with Picoscope, that certainly brings it to life. That really makes us, um, or helps us diagnose these problems. Yeah. I think without further ado, let's, let's begin with section one as, as to introduce NVH. Okay, Frank, NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Acronym is NVH, of course. Noise is defined as an unexpected or unpleasant sound in the wrong place at the wrong time. It sounds obvious, doesn't it really? But we start the vehicle in the morning, the engine we accept will make some form of noise, some form of vibration, but should we develop a knocking noise from that engine at a specific frequency, that becomes a real issue and that becomes a true customer complaint, a complaint of noise. I think we have to focus on the fact that the motor vehicle essentially is a series of, of mechanical components that are constantly in conflict with each other. <laughs> things that go round and things yes. that go up and down yes. never are going to be harmonious. Yes. Yeah. We have to understand the difference between what is normal and correct yes. and what is a fault. Yeah. And certainly NVH will allow us to do that because you've just hit on something there. What is normal? What is correct? Yes. What is characteristic? It's very easy to convince yourself that there is a problem when in fact this is a characteristic of the vehicle. Absolutely. So to be able to conclusively measure that yes. is uh, incredibly powerful. And compare it with a yeah. known, a known a platform. Yeah, a known good vehicle. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, vibration then is defined as an objectionable, repetitive motion of an object. And this is either... Um, back and forth, so fore and aft, up and down, or left and right, mm -hmm. lateral. Um, the three axes of vibration, you'll hear that term a lot over the next few videos, three axes of vibration. Um, think of a tyre uh, with an excessive lateral run out, that would affect the vehicle in a lateral direction. And we can measure that vibration in that axis only, as we can in the other axis. So my, my, my understanding of, my simplistic understanding between, say, noise and vibration is, Noise can be a singular event, mm -hmm. multiple of them, but singular events, mm -hmm. whereas vibration is repetitive. It has frequency, yes. it yes. has amplitude. Most certainly. Which can yeah. change yes. when you drive the vehicle, and yes. it will change, yes. but it is, nonetheless it's repetitive. Yes, yeah, yeah. Numerous factors, certainly speed. Um, as we come to do road testing, road surface, um, vehicle settings. I mean, you, you've mentioned this a number of times about when we're looking for vibration, we must, must make sure that we're driving that vehicle exactly as the customer would drive the vehicle. Uh, mode suspension settings. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think also, uh, from the point of view of the, the, the workshop, you must choose a piece of road that is your test bed and yes. stick to that piece of road. Yes. Otherwise, you've not got a level playing field. Yeah. It's about removing all the variables. Yes. And I think if need be, if we have to drive on the road that the customer experiences, experiences the problem, then we'll have to. Yes. That, that's how it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it could be a particular piece of road surface, mm -hmm. which is an issue. Yeah. And, and we have to take that into account. That road surface doesn't have to be potholed or rough. It may be the texture Correct. of that road surface that's generating a tire noise, which for all accounts and purposes is, is not a problem with the Correct. vehicle. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we can qualify here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, harshness is defined as a sudden, aggressive suspension feel, lack of give to a single input toe. That would be a pothole. That would be suspension bottoming out. Yeah. Um, a real harshness between the road surface and the steering wheel, for example, mm -hmm. that you're feeling that whole event being transmitted through into the cabin, steering wheel, floor pan, seat, however you're connected with the vehicle. So you're suggesting there that harshness perhaps is a relationship between the environment the vehicle's operating in and how the vehicle responds to it. How the vehicle uh, instantaneously responds to an event, yeah. yeah. Um, 
knocking events in suspension, these singular events, uh, they're a real nuisance. Um, trying to diagnose them is, is challenging, mm -hmm. subjective at best, yeah. unless we can measure. Yeah. But again, we'll tackle harshness as we move through, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it may be a good point to this, that technicians have always described noise vibration harshness based on opinion, yeah. never on facts. On facts yes. What MVH does as a, uh, as a tool yes. is present the facts. Yeah, objective results. Yes. Yeah. Um, we'll look at the different frequencies involved with noises and vibrations, and there is a gray area where we'll experience either noise or vibration differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I may jump into the car and I can hear a booming noise. You jump into the car, you think, oh, well, I can feel something. We could, we're talking about the same thing, in effect. Yeah. And interesting, we have to accept that humans have different hearing capabilities. <laughs> like there's not enough variables. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. The, the customer has one opinion, um, yes. but we'll be objectively measuring those. Yes. So that's the real benefit here with NVH. Mm -hmm. So in a series of videos, we'll aim to show real life examples of um, the tool in action, looking at cabin noises. That might be um, rattles, creaks, squeaks, knocking noises. Mm -hmm. uh, suspension issues, this is a real um, this is quite challenging for intermittent noises from suspension, but of course we know how to tackle these now. Um, revised techniques that we've sort of developed over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Engine noises, uh, prop shaft imbalances, that's not necessarily prop shaft, that might be drive shaft, anything that rotates on that vehicle. In fact, there's a saying, anything that shakes, vibrates or makes a noise, we can capture those with MVH. Would, would, you, would, would you say it would be a good idea for... The, the, the technician to have, I'm going to call it a process, a means of driving that is a laid down process which he can repetitively follow. Most, how, how he accelerates, accelerates yes. how he brakes, how he yeah. operates the steering, yeah. so that it's an objective platform from which yes. these results are obtained. Yeah. I think you mentioned a test route, having a test plan, taking into consideration the customer complaint, that most certainly. Mm -hmm. um, let the customer drive the vehicle yeah. in these yeah. scenarios. That's, that's yeah. I think, essential. Yeah. Yeah. Um, take that vehicle out, try and simulate as much as you can the customer complaint, the conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a test plan, um, essential, especially if you're not going to see the customer. There's always that, isn't there, that the car is dropped off. Have a test plan, um, a driving technique. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about road test techniques as we move through. Sure. But certainly selecting neutral will allow the engine to idle down, but we can maintain road speed so yes. we can separate engine, yes. from, uh, from engine from road speed vibrations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so why do we need NVH? So we've talked already, customer complaints on the increase, and this is, I think, borne about by hybrid and EVs and just vehicle interiors in general. The cars are aiming for the, the optimum driving experience, aren't they? The yes. Minimal yes. noise, minimal intrusion. So any inkling that there's a, a noise in the cabin or there's vibration passing through, there's, there's upset, you know, there's a concern from the customer. Cost-effective demand for a solution. I think traditionally NVH has always been an expensive tool. I mean, they, there are some incredible NVH tools out there on the market, costing thousands and thousands of pounds and, and then additional cost for software as well. Mm. Beyond, beyond, beyond the reach of a, 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 a rapid repair. repair. Oh, I would, yes, yeah, no, certainly, yeah, yeah. you'll see them in uh, research, development and Absolutely. manufacturing. I mean, these are the kind yes. of tools we're talking about. But think about, how, you've got a Picoscope already, that MVH is an accessory to that tool, to Picoscope, for measuring noise and vibration. Yeah. Ability to record playback vibration and sound data. This is, um, this is a real win. I'm passionate about this, and this is capturing these customer complaints, capturing the event. Um, you've got objective results, you've got proof. Um, you need proof. You know, why am I changing this component? Um, is the, the noise that I've captured, is it a characteristic? Is it normal? Yeah, what, what has drawn my attention to that specific area yes. or component? Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. This is the speed that the customer was driving at. This is the engine speed, and this is a, a sound that I can hear, and this is the frequency. We'll capture this all with MVH. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've touched on this already, Frank, back-to-back -back testing, yes. comparison testing. Um, yeah. You're in a world of pain if you start rectifying or attempting to rectify characteristics. Yes. You, you see it time and time again. Yeah. Um, we need to explain to the customer that the car is behaving as designed. The, you know, the frequencies, the noise that we can hear, what he can feel is completely normal. 
should we, I think at this point, also make an issue here? Has the vehicle been modified? <laughs> yes, yes. Has the customer put different wheels, different tyre sizes, yes. yeah. changed the power outputs of the engine, changed the suspension geometry? We might be trying to fix a fault that is inherently now being built into the vehicle. Most certainly. I, I think um, we, we, we stand here and we say back to back testing like it's easy to do, like we can just go outside and find an identical vehicle and drive that mm -hmm. at the same speed and, and, and everything's fine. But the second you just change tyres on a vehicle for a different brand, everything's changed. The variables have just gone through yes. the roof, haven't they? Yes. So there has to be a, um, a tolerance between vehicles. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is all about. I call it get out of jail testing, really, back to back testing. Yeah. Yeah. We can still prove the, the, the area of concern, the components of concern, yes. but then we have to build in the, the, the unknown yes. parameters. Yes, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, the classic one that brings to mind was uh, customers coming out of um, conventional injection, gasoline injection engine vehicle into uh, direct injection gasoline engine. Um, just the noise generated from those injectors. Yes. The customer was absolutely convinced that he had a tapping noise. Yes. He was convinced. Yeah. But to be able to record the noise level from one vehicle and another, we were able to put that to bed very quickly. Mm -hmm. Accurate identification of vibration and sound source. You'll see as we move on that the software will pinpoint specific known vibrations. So we'll know the tyre frequency, we'll know the frequency of the prop shaft or the engine. And if the amplitude of those is excessive, we've, we've clearly identified what it is that's yes. vibrating. But probably more importantly, we vibrate, uh, identified what is not vibrating. How, well, how important is that? <laughs> diagnostics is a series of, of if, if a, uh, test failures before you find the actual yes. responsible yes. component. If you look at it in a, in a, in a, in a negative way, yes. you're yeah. ruling out what it isn't and, and yes. drilling yeah. down ruling to... Ruling out what it isn't to, to arrive at what it is. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've all been there with these vehicles, road testing, and we all have an opinion of what we yes. think it is, but to be able to quickly say it's not this or this component, so yes. now we're left with two others, it is a godsend, it really is. Yeah. And the classic there is, customers had the wheels balanced several times, it can't be wheels. Can't be wheels, but actually, it can be. It can exactly be, yeah. Um, before and after fix for customers, something you mentioned to me, Frank, about um, carrying out modifications to customer vehicles. They want mm -hmm. superior handling, so they want performance shock absorbers. They want the suspension lowering. Mm -hmm. lowering sorry. Are they aware what's going to happen to their vehicle in terms of ride quality? Mm -hmm. you know, we need to perhaps measure before, measure after mm -hmm. for modifications, or of course before fix and after fix to qualify repair. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Qualify. And again, objective test results. You've, You've got, got proof. proof. You've got proof. We all have an opinion of what we think it is, yeah. but yeah. can you argue with the science, with the measurement? The, the, the confidence from, from the technician in progressing into the repair of that vehicle is based on evidence. And, evidence. and that really is that's the, win. that's the winner. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have an animation then of NVH and how we interpret these terms. So we have the bobblehead on the dashboard. Everything is fine. Music is playing, no noise, no vibration, no harshness. And then of course, vibration develops, noise develops. Just how uncomfortable that can feel inside the car. I guess here we're talking about the perception, different frequencies, different levels of noise. Exactly, yeah. Some of which can be unavoidable, such as road surface. There we have harshness, yeah, depicting those sudden impacts and how they affect the vehicle and they affect the occupants of that vehicle. And obviously wind noise, wind noise is a big, a big yeah, factor. Yeah, I think we all have different tolerance levels as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing, you jump into customers' cars and you hear this noise, vibration, what they feel, this vibration, and the customer has no perception at all, that's quite normal mm -hmm. to them. You know, what, is, um, what, it, what, what qualifies a customer complaint? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would you need to measure NVH? Well. Um, we have here the standard essentials kit. That includes a four channel scope. It also includes two microphones, two accelerometers. You're also gonna need the software, Pika Diagnostic. So MVH is contained within the free software. And of course, how do you display? How do you um, capture or how do you review your results? Well, with the screen here, this is the bar graph screen that you'll see from the Pika Diagnostic software. And I believe the software 
has a license which is given freely on purchase. That's right. Well, as we move through, yeah, if it's um, whenever you purchase an MVH kit, you are required to uh, obtain the serial number of the scope and the serial number of the interface, and that will release a license key that will then unlock your scope for MVH. So it's not the PC that you unlock, it's the scope. So that scope can then travel anywhere, shared with anyone, to measure MVH. Good point, Frank, actually, is that you don't need a scope or an MVH kit to view NBH files. The software is free. Mm -hmm. You can nip onto the forum, read some case studies, open up the NBH files, zoom, view, change the views, highlight different areas. The software will allow you to do numerous um, operations uh, without purchasing. So you can take either. arbitrary measurements from a, a pre-saved file you have, yeah, so for example, uh, you go to the forum for a case study of a, a prop shaft. Uh -huh. As long as they have posted the NVH file and you have the PicoScope software installed on your PC, yeah, mm -hmm. it will open. Okay. You'll be able to see exactly that road test. Any recordings that were done at the same time as well, they'll mm -hmm. all be there. Okay, so the scope kits, um, three kits, starter, standard, and advanced. So here's a starter kit. Four-channel scope. This is the essentials. Um, if you don't, uh, if you already have a Pico scope, sorry, you don't need to buy an essentials kit because anything with the word essentials in there um, determines that there is a four-channel scope in the kit. If you buy a starter NVH kit, that's everything in the kit except the scope. So if you're already a Pico owner, so if you've got this hardware, yes, you can buy. Just the essentials with MBH? Uh, just the um, accessories. The accessories. Yeah. The word essentials determines that there's a scope in the okay. kit, yeah. I'm right in saying it can be a two channel scope? Yes. Uh, or a four? Yeah. Okay. In our kits, everything essential is four channel. If you have a two channel Pico scope, you're not penalized in any way. You'll mm -hmm. see as we come to do measurements that if you wanted to do a three axis measurement, that you'd have to choose two of those. Any two of the three? Any two of the three axis, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to focus all our road testing, all our descriptions over the next few videos on the standard NVH kit. Yeah, because within there we get two microphones, two accelerometers. And the benefits of which, Frank, pretty obvious in that you can minimize the amount of road yeah, testing yeah, that you do. You're halving your dynamic exactly, test. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. For example, a customer complained <clears> of vibration with the starter kit, you'd have one accelerometer or a microphone connected. You do one road test and obtain a vibration. And it may be that you want to do a second road test. You're going to have to reposition that accelerometer, try and reproduce your variables or minimize your variables by doing exactly the same with the road test. Just increases your diagnostic time. Um, to be able to have an accelerometer mounted on the floor, on the seat frame, yeah. and then another accelerometer maybe in the engine bay. In one road test, we've captured yeah. two zones of the vehicle. Yeah. And perhaps just bear in mind that when you drive a vehicle, the tyres warm up, that can change the whole thing again. So you, the, the amount of variables, variables in the subject, subject are endless. Yes, yeah, and we need to be aware of them. Yes. Yeah. In no way must we be put off by these. Being aware, I think, empowers, yeah, yes, most certainly. Mm -hmm. um, finally, the advanced NVH kit, essentials kit. So again, essentials would mean there's a four-channel scope in there. You could still buy this without the scope. Four channels, four accelerometers, four microphones, any combination. Um, could be great for that initial road test of an accelerometer placed on all four corners of the Each vehicle. Each corner, absolutely. Yeah. One road test, yep. yeah. one capture. Yeah. The ultimate starting point, the, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, four microphones as well, or any combination. It may be that we've got a noise or a vibration, we're not sure which, let's have an accelerometer on the driver's seat, uh, accelerometer front and rear, and maybe a microphone in the cabin. Yes. Uh, you touched on something here about narrating your road. Absolutely, if you're driving the vehicle and an event was to take place, or an observation, make the observation vocal. Record on, w within the, uh, the tape yeah. an observation you've made. If you wanted to reproduce it or discuss it later, yeah. or replay it in the workshop, yes. you've got the notation actually yes. on the tape. Yeah. I like the point of narrating the road test because it may be that you've just hit an incline and you've kept your foot on the gas pedal perfectly mm. still so then the load characteristics have changed mm. on the vehicle. And it may be something the actual owner of the car actually says that helps you in the process oh, as well. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. As you open up that rapport with the customer. Yeah. yeah. And the trust is building, yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
So here it is, the NVH Essentials Kit. Two of everything, two microphones, two interfaces, two accelerometers. Um, if you're gonna connect anything to this uh, PicoScope, it has to go via an interface. So let's take a look at that. So, well here, microphone, this microphone screws into an extension cable. Best position ideally for the microphone is wherever the customer is complaining. If it happens to be rear passengers that can hear the noise, mm -hmm. let's put the microphone by the rear passenger. Otherwise, generally, that would sort of hang up round by the rear view mirror, yep. and that would be capturing all our cabin noise. Mm. If it's going to connect to Picoscope, it must go through an interface. So whatever accessory it may be, if it's an accelerometer or a microphone, it must go through an interface. Mm -hmm. The accelerometer, this is a um, three-dimensional accelerometer which has a, a very powerful magnetic base, so it will attach to anything. Um, this is ferrous base. Uh, and once again, goes through the interface yes, before it goes to scope. Yeah. Um, plenty of lead length. I've had no, no issues there with reaching different areas within the vehicle. Yeah. So you, you haven't found that you, whilst there's an extension lead in the kit, you haven't had to use one? So far, no. Uh, okay. no. No, that's good. And how would that connect to Picoscope? Well, there's our in, uh, interface. It's um, X, Y, and Z of the accelerometer goes to A, B, and C of Picoscope. Accelerometer would connect into here. And there you are. That pretty much is your connection for a vibration measurement. I really don't think it gets any less intrusive. You know, certainly from a noise vibration point of view, if that's what the customer complaint is, attach it to the seat. It's generally the driver who's complaining. Yeah, we're dealing with the complainant as the driver, therefore... Yeah, we assume that. Yes, yeah. Let's assume that we're collecting the data from the point where the complaint is being made. Exactly, I would yes. agree, totally, yes. Yeah. So here we have a road test of just how we would carry out our initial vibration measurement using the standard MVH Essentials kit. There's our components within the kit. Three axis measurement, so X, Y, Z, a, B, C. You see there we have a mongoose lead. We've chosen mongoose lead to connect into the diagnostic connector. Our accelerometer mounted onto the seat frame. And it's essential that for our first road test, if it's a three axis measurement and we want to identify the offending axis that we mounted vertically with the screw thread. The screw thread is in the front of the accelerometer. Screw thread facing forward. So that would be our orientation for our first measurement. There is, there is a, a map, a, a map of the three yes. dimensions actually on the device as well. Yes. So a directional map, which is best orientated correctly in, in the vehicle. vehicle. Absolutely, mm. yes. Um, the Mongoose, this is our chosen J2534 interface. This allows us to connect into the vehicle diagnostic connector and request three pieces of information, engine speed, road speed and chassis number, VIN number. Yeah. Depending on the vehicle, we don't always get VIN number. Uh, there's often um, not so much an issue, but sometimes they're through the protocol, mm -hmm. we can't obtain it. The software will explain that, or it will, will identify that it cannot detect VIN number, so it would be a manual entry. I'm right also in saying, in fairness, if you've got a pass-through device, that you can use that pass-through device to obtain the same information yes, yeah, to work with MVH. Yeah. So if you have another diagnostic tool uh, utilizing J2534 protocol, pass-through, mm -hmm. as long as its software is installed on your PC, the drivers are installed, then MVH will search for that device mm -hmm. and use that to obtain engine speed and road speed. Yeah. Um, the Mongoose is not included in any of the kits. It is an accessory over and above an essentials mm. kit. And if you're a specialist company like we are on VAG uh, <coughs> range of vehicles, <coughs> that particular company does a higher level of, of um, interface profile with... Uh, yes, yeah, so this would be Mongoose for VAG. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So as a uh, specialist company, you might consider yeah. that as being a, an option you might want to undertake. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I know from the brand that I know is uh, Toyota Lexus, exactly the same. <coughs> Mongoose optimised for Toyota Lexus. Mm -hmm. Pass-through device will work with your MVH kit. Yes. Yeah. So we've had the opportunity of um, a overview of the hardware with the MVH kit. And I think you'll see that the application of the hardware in itself is very quickly uh, connected to the vehicle. The next section is 
I think crucially important, and this is the theory of MVH, we must have an understanding of what it is we're actually capturing and to understand the theory is important to be able to relate it to certain functions within the vehicle. So the next section is the theory of NVH.